So, let's talk about golf club fitting. Is it really needed for golfers like me at mid handicap? For you that could be low handicapper or high handicap golfers? Is it really important? Is it necessary? Is there going to be any benefits of this? As you can see, I'm with Mizuno Golf down here at Burwood Lakes today. We're going to find out just that. Let's crack on. So, as I said at the top of the show, I'm down here at Burwood Lakes. Uh, I'm going to go for a mat. How are you, mate? Yeah. All good, sir. Thank you so much for, for having me. Uh, I really appreciate it. I wanted to, to make a point of saying, is fitting for golf clubs necessary for the likes of amateur golfers? What I've seen is what you guys have got with the DNA system that's now the optimizer, is that correct? Correct, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, is, it seems to go into a new different way of fitting. It's more um, specific. Instead of guesstimate, oh, I think you're in this shaft, I think you're in that. It brings up the whole series. What, what is, what is Mizuno's idea behind that? Yeah. So what we've got, the beauty of the optimizer for us is it doesn't know who's, who's singing it. You know, it doesn't matter what, what's going on with with your move from A to B, from the top of your swing, from the start of your swing, it doesn't matter what's going on, all it's gonna pick up is, is what's going on from the most important part. You know, when we look at golfers like Jim Furyk, look at golfers like Ernie Els, so different in their move, mm. but very, very efficient from, from impact, you know, and that's really what we're trying to get back to is impact and then creating as much, much consistency from your move as you can. So, okay. You know, there's, there's so many positives that it brings out, but it just does it so much quicker than we could do it with our eye. Yeah. So, you know, when we look at when we look at the, the four things that the, the DNA is bringing up, you know, you've got your tempo, kick angle, toe down, release factor. People too, people get too drawn into club head speed. You yeah. Know, they say, do I swing it fast enough for this? Do I swing it fast enough for that? Yes, that's an important part of of golf, an important part of, of shaft fitting. But if we can dive into those four. Um, those four specific keys that every golfer does but if we can get into them in more detail then we can start to paint a bigger picture because that's something I'd be very interested at is that you, some people have seen me from what I've done with Rick in the past and I got fitted up for a driver a few years ago and they put me in a shorter than standard length shaft in a stiff and I'm thinking hold on with my swing speed you could grow a beard and probably die by the time I've hit a golf ball I'm that slow and I, I didn't see why, with the speed of my swing speed, is what, why, why would I be in a stiff? I've always, I've always gone, if I'm buying stock off the shelves, well, I think a lot of golfers will do these days, they'll just go, I'll just have this one, it's a regular, away we go. So to see in a driving fit up with that, uh, but yet my irons and everything else is all regular. So it's just trying to find, you know, is, is there much relevance in terms of swing speed, in terms of the shift stiffness you have, or is that down to what, what people call the kick? In the shafts or, or it's or, all the above you know shaft flex is always up for discussion because one manufacturer will, will, will look at it differently than other manufacturers so there really isn't an industry standard so you know we've got shafts in our range here that some say extra stiff and some say regular and they play very very similar right. so shaft flex is always a always a difficult one because it, it's more of an education for, for people you know it's trying to educate people into what shaft flex is you right. know it's it, it it is really a, a number, you know, if we could break it all down, and we always use the eye curves, which we'll come to later on in the fit, which, which breaks shafts down, it, it doesn't look at what manufacturers have stamped on them, it looks at physically how they bend, right, right. what's going on during them, during from their butt section to the tip section, and, and where the weight and the distribution of the flex is, so all these things that, that sound very complicated, but once you break them down to the simple terms, mm. it becomes very easy, so, you know, we'll look at that down the line, but, yeah, shaft flex is, is, it can be so indifferent from okay. manufacturer to manufacturer and, and player to player. Right, so when you're going into doing the fitting with, with, with Mizuno now, uh, what are we looking at, what do you put me on for the fitting, what, 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 what iron loft is it, or what, so what, is it, what number is it, five, six, seven, eight iron loft, what, what are we going to be doing today with this? So we are, we're in an interim phase at the moment of moving from six iron fitting heads into seven iron fitting heads. Okay. Um, so at the moment our JPX range is with seven iron heads, okay. um, and the MPs are at the moment six iron heads. Right, okay. Um, albeit a, a tour player or a 28 handicapper, we always start with the optimizer of the DNA because okay. we could spend an hour and a half in here and we could do it by eye, but the optimizer just brings it up so much quicker. Okay. You know, being able to understand what's going on from the top of your, top of your swing through, through impact and actually past that, being able to understand that makes the process a lot quicker. And then we can spend more time fine tuning. So as long as you've got the factual big chunks of data, yeah. then we can get some feedback from you, you can get some feedback, what you like, what you don't like, you know, factual bullfly, 
all the above to then narrow it down even further. Cool. The one thing I'm interested in looking at today, because I've looked at the MP MMCs on based on how the lofts are, because the lofts do start to, to go back down to standard size, standardized lofts by the time you get to the wedge. The irons that I've currently got at the moment are, are very are, are strong, and it was part of the, the first phase of strong lofted irons. Yeah. But what I've noticed is that the spin factor off those irons is very low, uh, and that's one thing that I'm, I'm with the golf course I play at Sale Golf Course, we've not got very many USGA greens, so in summertime it's just hitting that and shooting off like an next that missile. You know, it, that, that's the one thing that I'm trying to look at there in terms of, I want to make sure that the, the spin numbers are that little bit better from what I've been told. I, I have previously been to Mizuno and I've been speaking to a gentleman called Yako who's helped me out with this, and that was one thing that he picked, in, picked up was my spin on my six iron was ridiculously low in comparison to what it really should be. Um, so that was something that I had no idea about at the time. So trying to find something that's in your range now that would be an optimised or as best as we can get, but still with you know a decent amount of distance, but dispersion being better is what I need to look for. I've had a good season. I've gone from 13.1 to 10.7. I'm so I'm pregnant now. Uh, <laughs> in, in my, I'm now pregnant, as you can tell. You see on camera, I'm almost pregnant. Um, so I am now looking to try and get that that push down to the single figures. Techniques got better, so now moving up uh, again in a new set of irons to try and get that better consistency and a narrow dispersion. So what you what you would suggest, I will have the run through because you're the expert and I'm the idiot. Let's have a look. Right, let's, have a look. <laughs> let's crack on, guys. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do six shots with my six iron that I've got. Uh, we're going to get some data for that and we're going to feed it then into the system and, and have it all go from there. Yeah, right. so we're going to hit some, have a little warm up, see what's going on with yours, uh, and then I'll run you through the, the process of hopefully where we're going to get to and what we're going to see. Perfect, that no worries. We, if we take away the um, the bad shots in there, you know, they'll see the, the, the warm up jobs. We've got a fairly decent representation. How, how far would you normally say you've got? You'd hit your six iron. Yeah, the six iron has been the interesting one. Uh, seven iron, I would want to go one fifty, but if I'm just hitting out the buttons for carrying one fifty, then it goes. Yeah. Uh, but it has been round about between one four three. And one, four, six, and seven iron, so that's about right. Yeah, so if we have an average there, you know, you've got uh, your average carry there, one, five, five. But, you know, as, as you have kind of um, already uh, already touched on there, is there's a lot of things that are going to be fairly detrimental to creating consistent golf shots. Is your spin rates are very, very low there. So we've got an average spin rate of 3,500, 3,613 RPM, which, which for, for a six iron is very, very low. Um, you know, I think a lot of people forget sometimes that the the job the, the iron range is meant to do. You know, as long as you've got consistency from your longest iron to your to your shortest iron, yeah. that's what we're really looking for. You know, and, and as a as a brand, we're never really never really chasing distance too much. You know, we're not distance warriors. We're looking for consistency throughout the bag, not just oh, I'm six on two hundred yards. You know, that, that's great if you're going to play simulator golf and you've only got one club in your bag. Yeah. But once you get out of the golf course, you touch on, you touch on par threes, par fours, that you actually just want to go, well, I'll get my six up one, five, five, but most of the time. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's being able to draw a picture like that. So hopefully we'll touch on that in the in the fitting and explain how we can we can improve on that by hopefully actually not losing too much distance, you know, by, by improving quality of strike and actually getting the ball fly on, on the right, you know, on the right channel where it's meant to be going. We might actually notice that we pick up a bit of distance as well. So that's cool. So what we're going to do now then is hit three shots with our smile. So break it down. This doesn't matter about strike. It's not worried about ball flight. All this is going to monitor there is what's going on during your course. So you change direction, where you're stressing the shot, etc., etc. So we're going to hit 
three shots with that. So it will measure how many fish are catch and cast. It's well, it might, it might highlight that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> See, we can catch a lot of fish here, guys. <laughs> right. So a little bit of you said. Yeah. Can we hit three? We're three. Oh, right. right. just three. Yeah. That's the, that's the other thing it does, it does expose, is the fact that too many people think, oh, that's a terrible one, I'll hit another one. But actually, it's still the same move, we're just yeah. working on very fine margins. So, uh, that's a good move. That's a shot. Yeah, well, uh, not bad. Point three three average mile an hour head speed. Okay. Three four three nine. So head speed again, as we touched on earlier, is, is important. It's something we definitely need to keep our eye on. You know, yeah. we don't want to give you anything that's going to drop in head speed. We don't want to. We want to keep that as healthy as possible. But yeah. it's the next four. So your tempo, your toe down, your kick angle. Now there's one that really sticks out there in your release factor, which release. yeah, which is nine, which is um, which is obviously an extreme extreme side of the scale. Yeah, correct. Yeah, but but you know that's it's it's not a bad thing. This isn't highlighting bad things. It's it's highlighting factors in your move that we can give you things that are hopefully going to help it. Okay. You know, so it's, it's one not to get too dragged into, and not to get too disheartened or, or excited by it. Purely simply is a descriptive tool to explain what's going on during the swing. Fair enough. Okay. Cool. So top three then. Yeah, very similar in their weight band. You've got 95, 97, and 95 grams. So it's something on the, on the lighter side. Yeah. I'm not sure what we've got at the moment, but the XP. Uh, okay, so very light. Right. Okay. 80, 80, 80R, which you get for, for an iron shaft and very light. Okay. Now, when you're looking at weight, <laughs> this doesn't want to sit down. <laughs> When you're looking at like weight in, uh, in iron shafts, it, it, it's, an, it's an important one to get right. If you've got something that's too light, you then get your, your little muscles taken over. You can then become a little bit more casty if you like. Because right. You can go that way. So that I would argue perhaps a little bit too light. Okay. Um, but you've got in there something that isn't going to be too heavy that just get you get dragged down. Right. So finding that happy medium there. And then from there, we've got one in there that's stiff. Uh, your XP95 stiff, your NS Pro 95 reg, okay. um, and KDS Tour 90 reg. So, as I said, as said at the start, shaft flex is is very dependent on which which brand yeah. and which shaft it's coming from. Yeah, that's so, interesting. That. So the bend profile you see down the bottom side there, that 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 really unifies shafts away from what they're described as on paper, away from what they're described on by a little a little letter describing their flex. That's the way that we look at it. You know, whenever we have a new shaft, whether it be on tour or whether we're going to see something at retail, we break it down into the eye curve because then we can pinpoint it where we want it in our matrix of shafts. Yeah. So you've got something there that are going to feel very similar. Um, the main difference of those those three is going to be on in the tip section, okay. which we'll come to again. But we'll 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 build one we'll build one up and we'll get hit in one. That's cool. That's the one thing I didn't. You know, I've never really understood about shaft weight. Um, all right, if you've got a very heavy shaft, it's going to be swinging like a lead brick. Uh, a light shaft means that you're just going to feel nothing around, you're going to feel like it's just there. But I've yeah. never really took much notice in terms of, of shaft weight in the past. Uh, it's probably my ignorance on that, but I've never had that level of detail in fitting that, that we've got here. Uh, it, it's completely new element to me, that. Yeah, so I mean, shaft weight isn't only going to dictate head speed, but it also, it also controls delivery. You know, where you're delivering the club, the, the club head at impact because right. you can then manipulate it a little more. Okay. You know, it, it, to get super into it, you, you've got different bowing points in each shaft, which will then probably they'll give you different line rules. Right. So you know, if you've got a shaft that's very soft, you're going to impart a lot more bow on the shaft, you're going to do a slightly different line rules. Okay. okay. This is why we go through the shaft process first, mm -hmm. and then we we'll look at your, your line rules. So, right. Um, I'm going to start off with one that I think you might dislike. Okay. And we'll work into one if you like. Right, so I'll come back to us in a minute and we'll see what we're going to do with the first Mizuno Club Women's Test. So, you put me on this one then, Mark. So, we started with the, uh, the MP18 MMC. MMC, okay. Um, moving away from what you're used to in that, in the um, more 
kind of game improvement head okay. and into something a little bit more, um, a little bit more where your ball strike is acting and it also gives you longevity to, to improve. Okay. okay, so we're working that way. In terms of head design, I mean, we'll hit a few, see what we think, get some feedback. We might change it into something else. But that's what we're going to start with the, with the MMC. Um, and then we've also got the KBS Tour in there at the moment. KBS Tour 90. So, right. First of the three. Um, so let's hit some two things. So, yeah. Again, that's that's where you know, we were touching on on the job that the six are doing, and not 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 getting too far away from that because you you look, distance you could look after through using different golf clubs, you know, and and people get too too taken away from that, you know. And you look at it from from the, uh, the strengthening loft side of a lot of a lot of iron sets now, as they end up, you have three or four wedges, you know, like, you've almost front loaded it the wrong way. Yeah. So if we can if we can get something that, that starts to get stronger down the, the longer end, but yeah. it still looks after your shorter side and still looks dead pretty behind the ball, yeah. then you you know you're ticking some boxes. There. That's key. How's that feel to swing? Uh, it's a swing, lovely. Yeah. Really, really nice to swing.
that feel like? Does it? What does it feel like to move? Does it feel like it's lighter? Does it feel like it's softer? Uh, I honestly can't tell. I really can't tell between the two. I, I, I don't know if it's feeling heavier or not. I, I, I honestly don't know with it. it it's unless it's the head that's, that's heavier that feels heavier because the shaft is lighter. Yeah, uh, people, people really with that. People pick up flex and weight differently. Sometimes if, if something is stiffer, yeah, it's flex. Then sometimes people feel that that's lighter because you haven't got so much, um, you haven't got so much weight around. Yeah. So if you've got something that's stiffer, you usually people think it's lighter. So, but that is again very much down to who's who's swinging it. So yeah, feedback in that respect is uh, is key. Right. That felt a better strike. Yeah, come out with some energy, didn't it? Yeah, it came out with a bit more oomph for that one. Uh, I just want to try something just for me because really, just if I was as an assessment of those shots we've hit, your your bad shot comes from being a little, little low in the face. Right. Would that be fair? Yeah. When yeah, you're out on the golf course, you tend to get something that's a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Bottom. Yeah, certainly that way rather than the other way, rather than catching it a little fat. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the fat one was always the bad shot, uh, but since the slight change, I've just got more bottom because I've stuck the floor to it. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, this, is, this is now the hot metal. This is the, uh, the other end of the scale, but I want to see what this does. You might agree on something like in the middle, but right. where this has got a ton more weight in the sole, yeah. you might notice the increase in bull flight, in, increase in, uh, in spin, increase in a, a, a higher peak angle, but also um, the best, right? Right. Take a full block heavier already. This is in the seven, isn't it? That is correct. Yeah. It, that just kind of felt like it was going to space. <laughs> I don't hit a high golf ball. Okay. At all. Is that something you'd want to address? Uh, or are you quite happy with with the with the ball flight you made? You've, you've got. I think because of my swing speed and um, my angle of attack coming into a golf shot. I'm a picker, I'm not a divot taker. I've yeah. always been a picker. Yeah. Uh, I'm more of a sweep of golf ball. So I don't expect, I, I don't come down with a negative um, angle of attack. Yeah. So I don't expect things to pop up. Uh, I'm just more interested in the one, but will it get there? And yeah. two, minimize the loss of, uh, of, of the green left or right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's all I'm really concerned. I, I don't shoot at the pins, mm -hmm. I shoot in the middle of the greens. Because um, most things, of course, unless you go into one to an Americanized type course, you're in the middle of the green, no more than 20 foot away from a birdie. Yeah. All right, it comes in 20 foot per pass, it doesn't matter. But I'm looking at the guys, I will be hitting every green. Yeah. Even if it's just in the middle of the green, I can get to wherever I need to get to. So that bit doesn't really phase me too much. Good move. Thank you. How'd that feel? That felt a lot better. A bit clicky. Okay. It wasn't. He wasn't buttery, yeah. uh, if that makes sense. Um, I could tell it hit it, but it, it, it wasn't... Didn't give you that same sort of forged feedback. Yeah, it, it didn't make me go like, oh, yeah. just, just, just yeah. jump yeah. it. See, that's a nice shot. That's better. Yeah. That's that's it's more getting more to more. distance. Yeah, it's getting to where you want it really, isn't it? That shot though. Yeah. Closer, isn't it? It's on, a, on a nicer flight. Yeah, so it's, it's much more there, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and if you need to hit it any further, you've got your five iron, you've got your hybrid. So it's exactly. just it's creating consistent indices through the set that you know you don't have to you don't have to worry about certainly when you get a little bit of grass interaction, you get a little bit of a, of, of a flyer, that's where your strong lofted low spinning irons. Yeah. You just lose so much control. Yeah. And, and control is the name of the game. If we can control it, distance will come. You can work on distance. That's a whole other. That's a whole other ballpark. Yeah, that's true. That's that's just trying to work out and going in the gym, getting yourself. Yeah, there's, that's there's different things. Yeah. The um. Yeah, I, I do I seriously do like the, the the feel and the look of this. That show that it feels more comfortable, even more than what that the, the nine one nine four is just. Yeah, uh, I do like the. I actually like the look of the face better. It's just a little bit more compact. It feels. Yeah, that's what we've done really well this year in our range of not having irons that sit on top of each other. Yeah, you know, you've got six very different irons, and, and that's where you've got the variance to really fine tune. Again, we've tried you know, three different heads there, and 
two of them instantly, I said, look, we'll give that back. You know, you're not yeah. going to like that, you're not going to enjoy it. It's not going to go all that way, is it? No. Yeah. So yeah, I think just getting that wolf a little baby fit. It's getting the right way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. he's getting the, I mean, like I said, he's sort of like a pilot area to the distance. So I'm not catching the bottom of where it is to get to with it. But Familiarity, it's a, it's, a, it's a new alien club. It, it is, yeah, that's, that's the bottom line. It is very much so a new alien club in that regard. Um, yeah, I, I, can, I can certainly do it in that one. So I'm going to ask out of interest here then. And so this is my third kind of fitting with this. Can we try that in sort of stiff? Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. 96. Yeah. That was the first setting that I had originally when I got fitted the third day. So if you just see what this one's done, because of the casting, um, Yako's idea was the stiffer shaft might help move the casting a bit more. Um, yeah. And the interest just to see how that is against the little numbers. We did try it last time at um, the, the, at Bramall, um, and it came out pouring. It came out pouring in comparison. So this would be the route. So we've tried that all three different, you know, the new shaft that you think of, that you believe is the right one for you. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I like that idea. Yeah. Um, and then what this would be like. So. Too much. No, you know they are. They're exactly the same bend profile. They're going to yeah, feel yeah. exactly the same. Right. One is just a little notch up. It's just a fraction's difference. It's the fraction throughout. Just you know, it's not. It's not a different shaft. Not a different feel. You've just got a notch up in terms of flex. Right. Okay. So this one just wouldn't quite flex as much. No. Again, it, it certainly working towards your faults. It might be a little bit more detrimental. Okay. What does it feel like to swing? Does it feel different? That was slappy. What does it feel like? It, it, it does still feel, feel okay. But again, it's not, I, I felt I was hitting that quite well and it's not, it's still not going any, anywhere near what the the what's name was? It's what, just what not. It, it's not impart, imparting as much energy into the golf. No, it's certainly not. No, I agree with that one. So yeah, you've got increasing curvature as well. So yeah, it's yeah. got a little bit more to it because when we're coming down to the golf ball here, where that's just a fraction not catching up. Yeah. Just it, it's a lot more rigid, and you know it's the same thing with, with woods. When you have a shaft in your woods that is that is too stiff, it's yeah. a little bit too stable you see a lot more curvature because the club hasn't got enough time to create that to so that, like itself in. That's helped my curiosity more in terms of, well, that definitely is not going to happen. It's one out of three. Yeah, that's not, that's not good enough for me. Uh, as, as snobby as that sounds, it's not, it's not good enough. Yeah. Uh, what would I know? Uh, it, I don't know whether it's good, it's just, it's just not right. Yeah, it's, it, just, it just doesn't feel the way it needs to kind of feel. Um, so that, that's, that's an interesting part of that. Right, put another couple in just to make sure that's back to where we like it. That's back to where we are. So the only thing I would change from that exact setup there is it just your degree flat. So is this in degree flat now? That's not that's our standard. That's your standard. <coughs> right. Do you have one in degree flat or, or we don't. You don't we only have two up. Ah right, okay. Just set my word for it. Fair enough, no, <laughs> I, I will trust your man. Yeah, you know, your, your height was much better. Get into your last one there. 
yeah, you've got, you've got your high heart. It carries a little bit down, but I'm not worried about that because it's the nature of the beast. Yeah. You, you, you've added to your consistency, but you've also got something that's going to come in at the right height on, on where we want a six iron to come in at. Yeah, because yeah. I think it's, I think your six iron to my six iron is, I think it's a degree, a degree, degree less. I'll find out and I'll put it up on the, uh, on the, 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 the side afterwards. I think I think this is a this six iron is about a degree more. So I was going to say, do you want me to hit this six iron again? Yeah, Cal yeah. Cal Cal one. Yeah. Just to then do a, a final comparison between the lot. Yeah. Um, just out of total interest. So just hit two out of this after the two. I've just hit the. I'm going to do a really good comparison though, between yeah. the two. Yeah. See straight away the top line on this caliber looks thicker. Though. Sound, isn't it? Completely different sound, yeah, it's yeah. louder. It's a much louder sound. Yeah, there's not two ways about that. And again, that's it's gone not much different, really, has it? I mean, carry was carry was a couple of yards down, but but the really thing that's really harmful for there is is your overall height in there at 50 feet, yeah. 36 spin rate. It's just a little bit too aggressive and a little bit too kind of. Um, it, as soon as you get into greens, it's going to be so harmful. Well, let, let's look at it another way. If you look at the rollout, correct, yeah, rollout yeah. twenty yards. Yeah, you know that that's that's not good enough. That's great for a three iron, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And visually, it makes such a different noise. You see how the see how the left come back? Yeah. Okay, now, now you're teaming that in with a, a slightly softer, lighter shaft. Yeah. What we what we saying about the DNA, the optimizer there, when you've got a lighter shaft, you get to the top there. Yeah. It's just going to be so much more that way. So, so does that make sense? So that's everything all done, dusted. Now we've decided to settle on the KBS ninety regular. Yeah. Uh, Two ninety reg, yeah. and that's in the MP eighteen MMC. I purposely wanted to try what the JPX nine one nine would be, and it. For me, it just didn't. It didn't quite fit, did it? I think a lot of you, you see a lot with golfers is, is visuals and feel are very top on the list. Yeah. And if you haven't got those boxes ticked, then it doesn't matter if you've got the right shaft. Sometimes you put the golf, you put the club down behind the ball, and you you almost you almost setting doubts in your mind before yeah. you can hit it. So. I mean, I do it if something's a little bit too clunky, if you've got a little bit too much offset, you know, you look at it and you think, oh, you know, I might hit this left. And that might not be true, but if you've got those thoughts in your head, then sometimes before you've even taken the club back, you're, you're behind the eight ball. So, yeah, you know, I think certainly when we, when we, when we put the, the MMC back in your hands, you just create that shot you wanted to see, and you get better shots with it. So, as long as that box is ticked and you haven't got a, a steep drop off in your distances and your head speed like we are, we're keeping an eye on those. If you love the look of it and it creates consistent shots, that's what we're here for. You know, it's ticking our boxes. Well, exactly. That's what. Because what we noticed that with, with my own iron, it was going that the the bad was going left because it wasn't having the catch up. It was, you know, it was having too, too much of that. Too much catch up, yeah. really, wasn't it? And you know, we haven't we haven't gone super heavy you know, no. in terms of steel shafts. It's fairly light. Yeah. Um, but it's heavier than what you're used to. Yeah. You know, so if we can try and work on you on you being a little bit more driven by gravity mm -hmm. as opposed to your little muscles being able to take over and, and yeah. you, you cast it and then you saw that shot go right. So if you can get something that's much more out in front of you that way and like you're saying, you're, moving, you're working on your move, you can have that one way mix, yeah. that's only gonna help. And we, we've noticed that today that the one way wisp, wisp was more relevant with that club, wasn't it? Yeah. It was doing exactly what Rick and I have been trying to work on, is getting that little baby fade in there. Yeah. Okay, the baby fade does hamper distance, but it's not gonna attack me in terms of what is, what's the worst that could happen with this. Um, so that would be, I'm happy enough with that. It's just now, the drop off on distance that I've got with that is that I now need to start sorting it out to try and gain the strength and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and work it from there. But the drop wasn't huge. No. You know, the last one you hit with yours, that even went a little left, you, know, you shut it down a little bit. It was a, a, a little bit more of a draw, but the drop off wasn't huge. No. You know? So I would, I, I would like to think once you team up with a bit of familiarity and you get, you know, as you say, get working on your move and get out, out in front of you a little bit more, I'd like to see it going a little bit the right way. Well, that's what the off-season's there for anyway. Uh, it's the opportunity to work on the swing, get things working right, and get things set as it needs to be set. So, okay, so we're going to summarise this all up now then. So, as what I came back with my first question at the start of the day, should you be fit for irons? 
no matter what your standard is, low, mid or high handicapper, should you be set with irons? I think in terms of what the optimizer does through Mizuno, I think it, it's the best set that you're gonna, I'm, gonna be, I'm not being biased with anything this because you all know what I'm using at the moment uh, and the brand that I've been using for, for some time now. But I think in terms of being set, you, you've pioneered that way now with this. Um, you know, you've, nobody else has got this. Uh, and I think it's, it will be remiss of any of us amateurs to not necessarily get this, this chance to try this. Absolutely. If you yeah. try the other brands in, in the shops, then understandably you're gonna try the other brands of what would have the shelf appeal of what's been marketed in the way it's been marketed at the moment. But then you've got Mizuno that have always been, I'm gonna say really, I'm not being horrible when I say this, but you've always been the silent assassins. Mm -hmm. You've always been there in the background. Uh, and it proves it with, with the, the type of tour players that you have, now with Faldo going back, so Nick coming back to you, Luke is very much specific and he says what he's wanted. Brooks is okay, he's a non-Mizuno staff player, but he's using your equipment and he's, he's paying dividends. So it shows that what you've got in there has got a lot of, um, relevance to the, to the the player the tour yeah. player as well yeah. as those and this optimizer has blown my mind it really has blown my mind in terms of i wouldn't have had that opportunity to see those different types of shafts mm -hmm. it gave me three optim optimal shafts and then another six or seven that you could potentially use but also that's where where we kind of really um really keep our eye on is yes you could use those but we explain why they're probably not going to be the best for you. Yeah. You know, you're looking at what's going on, it's flex, it's weight, and, and actually having that visual of the of the app, you know, what we went we yeah. on the, on the EI, EI curve and you're, you're breaking down of each shaft, it makes it so much more visual for you. You know, you yeah. walk away thinking, I know exactly why I've got this shaft, you know, and, I, and, and hopefully, anyway. Yeah, no, 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 so, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you walk away, you know, I know why this is, we tried this, we didn't do this, it said that on paper and I felt that, or I yeah. didn't feel it. You can just be so much more um, visual and understanding with it because it's, there because it looks at the numbers when you input the numbers at the top you know you've got this you've got that, that until you see it in a graph then you kind of go ah that's how the the, the curvature is going in, in the graph and what is the best well i think it's absolutely genius uh, i really really do um i just want to say thank you to, to yourself uh, matt for, for letting me come down yeah, here and, and more point thank you to mizuno as well for allowing a a, a small little, little um youtuber like me uh, to come down to this amazing facility at Birwood lakes um, and also thank you to Yako, who's had the mispleasure of seeing me twice. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I can't say thank you enough for this. Folks, if, if you haven't carried on watching this, because we've gone on a long time, I think it is really, really useful that you, you at least take a look at this system. Um, and, and, and I think it's the best fitting system there is out there. I genuinely do. Uh, and I'm not saying because, you know, I, I don't get paid for this. I, <laughs> I, I, I pay myself to go and do this by paying to come down here. Um, but no, seriously guys, thank you very, very much. much. I really Absolutely. appreciate that, thank yeah. you much. Guys, if you like it, uh, follow Mizuno, uh, Mizuno Europe online uh, on the, the social media feeds that they have. And if you still like what I've been doing, come and give me a follow, come and leave some comments below. Pelters, no doubt. Take care and thank you very much.